This episode of The Chris David Show is all about the guys. So tell your daddy, your baby daddy, your brother, your uncles, and your sons to pull up a chair or put their AirPods in because they don't want to miss this. Our next guests are here to join us for first the Chris David Show, our Guide Talk Men's Discussion Panel. Two of our guests may look familiar. Returning to the Chris David Show, we have Chaz Bedford, aka the CP Warrior, and Deshaun Day Phoenix Arm Brister. Uh, new to the show, we have the Brooklyn Playboy with the vibe of the day, Jamel Lamar. So clap it up for my guys, give a warm Chris David Show welcome to them. And um Let's talk. I mean, listen, before we get started, I got to thank all of y'all for pulling up this morning. And, and you know, let's just jump right in because, you know, I got a timer on this shit. So, yo, what do y'all think about the AI, the, the, the artificial intelligence shit? What do y'all think? I, I want to I, I, I get, uh, Chaz, I want you to start off and, and uh, tell us what you think about that. Well, I, I, I don't know. I didn't know too much about it. I just know when I started doing it, my father called me because, you know, when they, um, when they first came out, everybody was doing like those portraits and it was creating like showing them like people as astronauts and all that other stuff. And then I know I was like, you know, following the trend. I'm like, OK, it was making me look like a prince or an astronaut or whatever. And then I remember my father called me. It was like, oh, yeah, you got to stop doing that because it was on the news and they're saying that it was using people's face and I was like, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it, but um, I wasn't too concerned about like the facial part of it, but like this whole thing where it said on the news recently, like they using people's voice recordings to like make fake phone calls to other people and using their voices to get like, as um, what's it called, um, passwords, some, um, like whatever, if you have voice recognition to something, people are using that to get into like their accounts and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think it is going to be a big problem in the future, though. Man, um, yeah, uh, uh, Jamel, what do you think of it? I, I have, a, I have a lot of, I have a, well, yeah, yeah, y'all gonna really hear <laughs> because I mean, uh, you know, the I limo. come from. No, well, I mean, Listen, I, I'm I, ready. I come you from see, the music industry. Guy. I'm ready. I'm I'm gonna give it to you. And, I mean, I like I'm I've grown up in in the music music industry, so you no, know, it it definitely hits my whole entire world in a lot of different ways. But then you know, and as it's a lot of people that are not no longer with us. You know, like Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Biggie, Tupac, um. A lot of uh, uh uh of you know artists that I would love I would die to hear him collaborating with other artists today, but of course you know due to you know them passing on, it's it 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 it's only can be thought about. But you no, know, I know that people are like oh well AI can now we can no no because you have to think about it in this way if they are not here physically to write it's artificial why why you know do us the dishonor and I say us as people why do us the dishonor to work with anything artificial I want to I want it to be genuine I want it to be real. It's the word itself, artificial. It's doing us the dishonor. So why even fuck with it? Why even do us the dishonor of doing that? Like that's like saying, like, yo, here's a diamond, but it's an artificial diamond. <laughs> what? Why give it to me? Why mess with it? It's not real. I think people get so comfortable with 
you know, living with 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 the 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 artificial reality, which and 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 that plays a lot with also social media and stuff. Oh well, I got no, yeah. no, no. All right, so Deshaun, what do you think? I want I want to know what you think about it. Basically, for me, as Chef had mentioned before, right? Like I was a part of that whole AI wave with the photos and stuff like that. Me personally. When it came to that, rather, I know a lot of folks are like, oh, the government, like, you know, the conspiracy theories of like people having your face. But sometimes I just be like, at the end of the day, they already have you out there. You have a whole Facebook profile, you have a whole Twitter profile, you have all these profiles where you have a photo that shows you, right? But on the other hand, though, however, um, as a creator, as, I'm more of a dancer, but I do dibble and dabble sometimes, like, you know, light editing and things of that nature. Um, I do see the artistic value. However, the danger I do see, because I've been seeing a lot of photos lately where um, some of the AI was replicating certain time, right? So that goes back to, like, the authenticity. Um, the only thing that probably would give it away, because AI apparently hasn't excuse me, been able to get a grasp on hands. Like, you can tell sometimes in certain photos, like, the hands be a little bit rough. I'll put it in... Um, yeah, we yeah. have like six fingers, eight toes uh, on hands, and it's like, well, what's going on? So, with that being said, it's just once again, it's taking away the authenticity about life, right? Um, it's understood that life imitates art, art imitates life. As artists, we create things, um, basically based on what we kind of experience, if not experience fully, to a certain degree. When it comes to fantasy and stuff, that's a different story, right? Um. I think that we've come up with CGI and all the other stuff, which is great when it comes to movies, things of that nature. But when it comes to actually replacing and trying to replicate and duplicate living organ like organisms and beings and shit like that, that's where it could be very potentially dangerous. And I, my mind, I'm not even going to lie to you, when I think of AI, hey, there was a movie named AI, Artificial Intelligence. I always think of movies like that. Always think of my robot. Always think of shit where it's like, whoa, like what if we get to a point where the AI does get a little too smart and it's taking over from what human beings do. And even passively, if you really think about it, let's take it away from the actual images and stuff like that, right? Because artificial intelligence, you really think about it as a big umbrella. It's basically just computer science, right? If you think about it, when you go into a McDonald's nowadays, you might have perks, but nine times out of 10, where are you ordering at first? You're ordering at the kiosk, right? They have the whole menu. You're pretty much self-serving or whatever. Might be easy, but what is that technically kind of taking away from? That's technically taking away from people's jobs, if you think about it, because now it's less staff, less physical staff that's there to take your order and things of that nature. Um, sometimes it could be a gift and a curse. Technology can very much be a gift and a curse. It can make us very lazy. It can also, once again, kind of manipulate what's not actually happen, right? Um, so yeah, I'm on like an 85 15. The 85 is more so like being cautious about how it develops. Um, the 15 is like, okay, like you know, I see the creative value, I can see where it can lend to certain things artistically, but yeah, it's something that we shouldn't like you want to watch it for, especially so, so when you're talking about identity theft and shit, yeah. This is how I knew we were going down the wrong road with this shit. So I found an <laughs> a, 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 a AI generator, okay? Yeah. And it was a website. And so I'm just typing in bullshit. I'm just like, oh, let me type in, because I have a cat. I'm like, let me type in, like, cute black kittens with pizza. And so I can't find that picture, but it, it gave me something wild. And I was like, man, this is crazy. So then I said, <laughs> let me type in Steve Harvey Wallace, right? And this is what it gave me. Steve Harvey as a walrus. So yeah. I was just like, you know what, man? I, I think I'm going to leave this shit alone. I think this is this is too much. Because the other thing was, they were playing um, on, on uh, TikTok. They had uh, Michael Jackson singing, I Feel It Coming By The Weekend. <laughs> and the shit was trippy. And they had uh, Rihanna singing Cuff It by Beyonce. Mm. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, this ain't bad. This, 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 this is actually, I like this. But at the same time, it's like, you know that it's not the authentic, it's not the real. It's not like what all three of y'all said. 
it isn't what it is. Like I have used Chat GPT to help me with some things. Chat Chat GPT is actually a pretty decent tool, but at the same time, like I think that you still need humans. You still need people in order to connect with other people. You know, that's my thing. But, Chris, um, I, I feel like Jay said a little something that yeah, just, yeah. that just gave me like he. I, I feel like it's like it's legacy stealing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's like that's a good one. You're stealing somebody's legacy. Like, like I'm the biggest Michael Jackson fan, mm-hmm. as probably all his fans. But if I hear a Michael Jackson record, then I know it's not Michael Jackson. I'm ready to break the record. I'm like, oh, exactly. whoa, whoa. Yeah, and I'm I not gonna lie to you. Sorry, sorry to cut you off, but even to that point, I'm very much. I'm not gonna front. I'm not. I'm again um posthumous album. Like you had mentioned earlier, like if the artist is not here, the artist is not alive, is not well, especially if a damn sure ain't really benefiting their like their families in their estate or whatever. But let's just take it to the boil down. They're not here. With all due respect, let their let their legacy live on. Let us remember them from the songs that they came out with with their genius, with their know-how, with their talent or whatever. I don't exactly. need a new Michael Jackson album. I don't need I don't need a new Tina Turner album. I kid you not. Do tributes, do whatever you need to have like real singers sing it at the end of the day, but I don't need yeah. unless the greatest hit, but I don't need to hear somebody trying to emulate Tina Turner. Like you know what I'm trying to say? Like exactly. that's one thing I've never been behind, even before the whole AI was Right, right. I, I, I'm, I'm with you a thousand percent. Like, I don't want to hear a new queen. I don't want to hear a new, you know, um, and I'm just thinking of a, like, like a, a Jerry Lewis or I don't want to hear none of that. Like, listen, if I missed it, I missed it. But I can go back and hear the old records and, and, and grab the Absolutely. bomb from that. But I don't want to hear a machine, something digital. Say well, no, I'm Michael Jackson, and this is how I would sound, or this is how I sound. Like, again, I'm from Brooklyn, so you already know Biggie. That's 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 the dude. But if I hear any, 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 any record, oh, the new Biggie album, and if it wasn't one of his, you know, records that he did before he passed, nah, right, don't right. play it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to imagine it. Timberland did that. I'm like, oh, this is how Biggie would sound. No, bro. No. Mm-mm. No. Hell no. Mm-mm. I never. So, introduce yourself to everyone and give us the vibe of the day. We need a vibe of the day from you, and I want you to introduce yourself to the well, audience. Well, I'm Jamel Lamar, Brooklyn, New York, and my vibe of the day is sometimes in order to keep your sanity, you must act insane. And when I say that is, you know, Craziness can be for anybody, not for any just artists, but craziness can bring out the best in you. Like when you listen to records, that pain, and you may hear in certain records, it came from craziness, but it's DMX, I'll give you for an example. He went through some shit. But when you hear them prayers, he threw in his records, when you hear those lyrics, it brings something out of you. Uh, it, it, Beethoven, you can listen to his music, and he is he didn't sing or nothing. He played an instrument. But when you hear those chords, how he played them, how he arranged them, that is Beethoven, and it erects something with you that be like, oh my god. And y'all know he was black, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't I know that. History, t- history mm-hmm. class isn't going to tell you all that, but you know that's that's where yeah. you got to dig deep, deep and get your own. Yeah. So, so let me ask y'all this: Do do any of y'all have nicknames like that you grew up with that you had as a kid or like you know? Man, you listen, you trying to give me trouble? Oh, shit. You trying to give me trouble? I'm trying to get everybody in trouble. I had a couple morning. of them, but you trying to give me in trouble? I give you three. Okay, go ahead. My my, uh, the first one was plug. Okay. And they gave me that at a kid age, so that you already know my family knew where I was gonna be. Right. <laughs> you getting yourself in trouble with that. Uh-huh. The, uh huh. The second one was Rock Melly Mel. My okay. uncle Earl gave me that that name, man. He just called me Rock Mel. I mean, he big hip hop head. 
I mean, mm -hmm. he was like driving the caddies, all that crushed groove style. <laughs> I mean, that that was just it. So he gave me that, and forever till this day, he called me Rock Mel. And the last one was one I got from my people in, <laughs> in high school. Shout out to everybody from Paul Robertson High School. They, uh, I got the nickname because it was a joke, but and I no, it, it just it just went from a joke to a whole vibe, a whole being, a whole swag. But the last one was Playboy, which I, I actually do have tattoo, <laughs> tattooed on the arm. So, Chaz, what's your nickname? Would you have a nickname growing up? <laughs> yeah, I had like I had about um, yeah about two. Um, my cousin gave me my. Oh, my cousin gave me my first nickname when I was born, and she still called me this to this day. Um, cause um, she I don't know how she came up with it, but sexy banana. That's what she called me because I was like light skin, you know, light skin. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. So she called me that to this day, sexy banana. And then um, and then my other nickname is um, my name is um, Chazzy Wazzy. But that okay. followed me ever since I was at like, elementary school. I don't know why people called me that because I guess it was like. I don't know. They was mixing my name, and I was always like a little comedian. So yeah, to yeah. Them, I guess so. Man, well, I'm definitely yeah, that, not gonna call you sexy banana. That's hilarious, though. <laughs> I, 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 I don't think one. that's a good name for us to call him. That, that's I know. Like, I'm like wait a minute. <laughs> what's what's your what's your nickname? Who me? Oh, what's... <laughs> no. I mean, so, um, he, he, <laughs> I already know. I, I just you know, I already know it, but. <laughs> no, um, so technically, Day is my nickname. Has been my nickname since high school, at least. Um, and you already call me Day Sean. That's my full name. But the story behind it, rather, is that in the AOL Instant Messenger era, my friend was spelling it D E Y. There's no Y in my full name. Um, and I just liked how it was spelled. And because Day Sean is such a popular 1990s name, um, like everybody, including their mama and their daddy, has been named Day Sean with some type of variation. I was just like, let me stick with Day. This sounds cute. But when it comes to my childhood, um, I used to be called Dee Dee, which I hated, to be honest with you. I hated Dee Dee. Like, I was like, don't call me Dee Dee. Um, because that also just made me think of like Dee Dee from Dexter's Laboratory. And I was just like, no. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. And then the main one that my family called me was Squirrel. Now, Squirrel. <laughs> Only family told me that of uh, basically when I was a baby and grand my grandmother's from Alabama, so real country. But um when I was a baby, my two front teeth were the first one is really growing in. So I was buck tooth. So that's where the name squirrel came from. And then my uncle Jojo, um Uncle Jamel rather funny enough, Jamel. Um he <laughs> um rest his soul, by the way, I miss it so much. But he used to call me Secret Squirrel because of the cartoon. Um, oh, as well as man. like me being smart and stuff like that or whatever. He always used to call. Oh, he also used to call me Braxton from freaking um Jamie Fox. Show. Jamie Fox show. Yeah, yeah, because he he saw me as like this real smart. But I guess a little. I mean, as a kid, I guess he saw me be a little bougie, a little crush. Um, I don't see myself as bougie, but I do think I'm a little intellectual. Um, That's but right. tell, me, tell, tell me, just classy. That's it. Right, just, just a little, you know, classy little um, ratchet, you know, just a little sophista hey, ratchet. That's right, what I just call myself. Sophista ratchet, that's a good, I like that. Sophista that's ratchet. what I call myself, sophista, sophista ratchet. ratchet. Um, but no, like, yeah, those are pretty, yeah, pretty much, like I said, DD, it was a no-no, it's a no for me. Um, yeah. and, and Squirrel, yeah, Squirrel was the more, yeah, the, the childhood. I like memory. that one, I, that, that one, yeah, that was the one I was referring to that I, that I know mine. Right. So I had two. Well, I had others, but I'm not going to share those because they're embarrassing. But I had two. <laughs> one was Smart Guy, like little, you know, like the TV show, Smart Guy with uh, yeah. Bowery. So one was Smart Guy, and then the other one is uh, Richie Rich. And so <laughs> I liked Richie Rich so much that, like, I would even, like, go by Richie Rich, like, in, in real life. And so Richie Rich, um, one of my cousins gave me that, and it was around the time that movie had come out um, with Macaulay Culkin and Richie Rich, because they used to say, yeah, you know, he, he thinks he's so rich, you know, he thinks he, he always wants nice stuff, and he's got to have this and have that. And I mean, what can I say? You know, I like, you know, I, I like luxury. I like nice things, and I was like that as a kid. So Richie Rich kind of just stuck, and um, that was actually going to be the name of this podcast, but then I said, I need to take myself seriously, and not so much be a podcaster, but actually, you know, use my journalism degree and have a, you know, and put together a show. So I decided to go by my real name, but yeah. So 
that was that. But anyway, um, moving on. So Father's Day is next Sunday. Um, what do you plan on doing? Um, this day, I'll let you go first. Um, I will be in the DMV at least. Um, I will be oh, wishing my mom happy. Get, get to that later. We're gonna get yeah, to that yeah, later. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, yeah. I ain't gonna give away too much. In addition, I'll tell all yeah. these secrets right away. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. but no, I'll be in the DMV. I'm gonna be wishing my mom happy Father's Day. Um, and maybe some of my other like, I guess I have like some other mentors. My father's not present, has not been present, or will not be present. Um, he's not present in my mind, my body, or my spirit. Um, but yeah, other than that, happy Father's Day to everyone else out there. I ain't gonna be too much of a hater, so to speak. But <laughs> that's it. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be wishing my mom a happy Father's Day. I bought her plenty of gifts for Mother's Day to make up for Father's Day and the Christmases I missed. So yeah, Shut he'll be out there mom. doing the go. He'll be out there doing the go go. In the DMV Listen. for the fathers. <laughs> Listen. Period. Period. Well, for the daddies, oh. exactly. <laughs> Chaz, what about you, Chaz? What about you? Um, what are you going to be doing for Father's Day? Me? Um, I'm just going to be home. I'm actually, I'm going to see my father and, um, what's it, in the big, um, for the 4th of July weekend, um, getting together with my family in um, Florida at my uncle's house. So we having like a little family reunion on my father's side because we haven't been all together in like years. But yeah, but yeah, as for Father's Day, I'll I'll be home. I'll call him, <laughs> but I'll be seeing him later on in July. Now, Jamel, what are you going to do? Jamel has a twelve-year-old uh, little yeah, Bam Bam. Have a, well, he's not twelve yet. Don't rush it. <laughs> I'm sorry, eleven. <laughs> okay, so... Bam Bam's eleven. My yeah, bad. He, he he be twelve at the end of the month, so don't rush it. <laughs> but um, but but yeah, what are you going to be doing? Yeah, uh, well, my my family usually uh they celebrate all the fathers. So my mom's usually do like the big old school Sunday Father's Day dinner. Um, my grandfather, God, thank God, he's still here. So I'm be spending time with him. Um. Uh, definitely, uh, you know what I mean, wish my, um, nah, I may or may not, I'm not sure about, about my dad's plans, because my dad has about five kids all together, so we kind of, <laughs> as the oldest, I kind of say, all right, all right, y'all can, y'all can, y'all can, y'all can have them, you know what I mean, I got my own, <laughs> I can, you know what I mean, so, um, but I, I definitely got him on a gift, I think this year, the gift I got him, he's going to, he gonna, he's going to love it, or gifts rather, because I always give him two, one for myself and one from his grandson. Um. So and, and yeah, just chilling. Um, chilling. My all the men in my family that that are fathers. Some people say that it's hard for guys to make decent friendships after high school and and college. What do you all think about that, Jamel? What do you think about that? I think that's nonsense. I think um, it depends on the person. Like if you're social, and you go to social events, like um, one of my favorite events I love to go to, especially here in Brooklyn, every month. Is Target First Saturdays at the Brooklyn Museum. When you go to those type of events, and you you know you could be at a painting and just looking, and you no know, learn no, and I feel like communication these days are one of the most like underrated arts. People don't care because they're so used to texting and stuff. Sometimes just you no, know, you could be at a library, you could be at a show. You can be anywhere and make a little comment and you'll be surprised with that one little comment or compliment to somebody else will transform into. So like right now, like, you know, we're having a conversation We're four men having a conversation. I think Dave's a cool dude. Like if he's like, yo, man, like, yo, do you dance? Man, I guess I get, I get the boogie. What's, what you trying to say? You want to battle? Like, even though I know he'll bust my ass, but still. It's yeah, that's a real question. Know what I mean? And then as we, we, you know, what I mean, you know, it's like, you know, or even, or even Chaz, uh, like uh, Chaz, you like the Knicks? He's like, yeah, yeah. No, nah, I don't. They trash. That little sports thing right there. We go back and forth, and before you know it, like we cool as, like we know exactly. each other all our life. So it's just, it's just about being social, having great communication. Don't think that sitting on the corner all the time is a way to meet people. And I mean, I've I just, even though, and no disrespect to Drake, but I've never been for that no new friends type of stuff, man. It's, it's you don't know what a new friend or a new experience to take. Clap it up for that, absolutely. Absolutely. Dave, um, what about you? What do you think about that? So, 
I'll to actually piggyback starting off with the whole no new friends thing, right? So it's actually funny that you mentioned that because when the back of my head, I was also thinking how I have all my current friends. I don't call them old friends because old you would think that they passed on and things of that nature, right? Um, right. I have all my current four friends. Yes, I do. Some who have lasted from college, some who literally lasted like way past freaking high school with that. Like, we know each other for decades, right? There are people that I know that I can trust that if anything really went down, if I needed emotional support, any type of support outside of like finance and stuff like that, I could turn to them. Now, I will say someone, um, and this is not kind of reflected with it, um, as someone who has a more creative career where it's like I'm almost working every day type thing and my schedule is unique, right? Not all the time am I able to hang out with my core group of friends. With that being said, to piggyback once again off of Jamel, when you're in these social settings or whatever, even as simple as like being on a stage or like kind of just sharing some type of common ground with individuals out in the street, it might not make them like your automatic bestie, but you can at least be open to other people who are like, you know, within the same thought processing, same realms as you are, have certain interests, and that's what brought you to that place. You have to be open to pushing your boundaries and being who else is out there for you. Absolutely. Charles, what about you? What do you think? Um, I feel like you can make friends at any point in life, like necessary. But I would say like after the um like after the pandemic and stuff, I feel like a lot of people, including myself, have gotten like socially awkward. <laughs> like communicating with people. It's like I feel like it's a shift now. It's hard. Right. to communicate with people nowadays because we all been through a lot even though we share this almost the same experience going through COVID you can see how it changed us in a lot of ways but um as far as like now for like any stage in my life it was always like easier for me to make friends but like I'm not the one that's really I don't say I'm more like reserved I'm not really I am outgoing sometimes so like <laughs> Mostly if it was looked at all, well, that's when I, you know, Listen, came alive. I've seen your pictures on social media. You're very but, outgoing. Like, <laughs> yeah. But most of the time, I'll I be shy. I'll be like, at first, like, like when you first meet me, I seem shy and reserved. But most of the time, I it's connect with people. Huh? I said it's all like that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. But listen, so, so here's my thing. This is why I ask this question. I say that, you know, Everybody can't be an extrovert. Everybody can't be social. Every that's not everyone's you know nature. Yeah. I know because that's my nature. I love I love people. I love to talk to people. I love to be social. All of that. But mm -hmm. I think that in in Chaz, you brought up a good point after the pandemic, like how things shifted. Um, I think it's just very important to show up, show up for people, reach out because you never know what a person's going through. Like Jamel and I hadn't talked for years, and I had his number in my BlackBerry. And I reached out to him and I was like, hallelujah, you know, he still got the same phone number. And it's just good to just reach out to people and connect with people. Um, me and me and Deshaun and me and me and Chaz also, you know, had had stopped, hadn't spoken, you know, for a little bit. And then, you know, we reconnected. And I mean, I just think it's just very important just for us to show up. We never know what someone's going through mentally, um, especially as black men, and, you know, because we, we stay hiding that shit, what we're going through. And I have a friend I grew up with. Um, I hope he watches this. I hope he sees this one day. My friend Brian, um, he went through, not even, our, I didn't grow up with him. We, we um, went to high school together, but he's been going through a lot of things mentally. And I happened to get in touch with him. When was that? Summer of 2021. And, and I, I just saw like what was going on with him and everything. It was very sad, you know, because he was truly just, I could tell that he was depressed. And I said, you know, if you need me for anything, let me know. Here's my number. It's never going to change. I've had the same number forever. Reach out. And, you know, if you need help, just, just tell me you need help. And if I can't help you, I know people and I know someone who can. And I just think it's important to show up. Like, we're all going to show up to Deshaun's event um, in June. He's having a free event out in Brooklyn. We're all going to go. Because I just went to the last one. And this is our picture from when I went. This is this is a very G-rated picture. This is because it was very X-rated what was going on. Oh, but this is very G-rated. Very sad. It was the pink. Listen, 
and that's all I can say. So we're, we're all going to call, uh, 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 Ch Chaz, you're going to come. Um, uh, 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 you're going to have to figure out something with work. Jamel, you, you're you going to be there and and, and bring, bring oh, your yeah, lady. Me and, my, me and my lady will pull up, you know what I mean? You yeah, bring, period. Bring your lady, and, and I'm telling you, it's... it's yeah, it's, you know... Yeah, you, we, you, we you don't know. Up. I can't go to no party without my lady. I always hear it now. Oh, but this is a <laughs> listen. This is now. Now let me tell you something about this party. We're gonna. I'm, I'm gonna talk about it later. But this is a party where your lady can take you in a back room and give you a lap dance. Oh, that's even better. Shit, that's a... <laughs> <Period>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, and, 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 the, and the beautiful thing about this place, what I liked about it, the beautiful thing about this is there's, there's no cameras, no phones. Like, you don't have to worry about, like, your privacy being encroached upon. Like, it's, it, 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 it was lit. It was a very lit event. I'll go into man, it later because I, I got to move on with the show. I'll go into it later. Um, <laughs> but speaking, speaking of mental health, because I know I brought up the thing about my friend being, um, you know, having his mental things. What do you all think about uh, therapy, Deshaun? Day, I want you to, to to go ahead. I am huge on therapy. I actually need to find another therapist because I only had a um when I was transitioning from going from my day job life to my I don't call what I do a, my career, right? Um, I'll put it that way. Um, I had like a tiny gap in insurance or whatever, and. and yeah, that's what caused me to get out of therapy. But I'm a huge advocate for therapy, to be honest with you. Um, I do believe that a lot of Black folks overall, like like I said, I'm heterosexual, queer, homosexual, trans, whatever, just need the damn therapy. It has nothing to do with um being, quote, unquote, crazy, which a lot of folks, I guess, tied to it. Um, like, if you're taking therapy, there's got to be something wrong, right? Um, honestly, there were days where I was taking therapy. I had an actual freaking day, actual freaking week. I just wanted to process what was going on in life. That was good, right? I had those days where, yeah, some, th some subjects might have been a little heavy, right? Losing um, family members, things like that. I've even had some um, therapy sessions with, and a lot of times, this is hell, crack a joke, because some shit that, yeah, may be frustrating or whatever in my life. My therapy is just to turn shit into a damn joke. You laugh and fine, right? Um, but in the same token as well, too, it's a lot of things that in therapy that because it's an unbiased opinion, someone who literally don't know you from a can of paint other than you being introduced in the session, um, you get a lot of clarity if you are willing to be fully you and fully transparent, right? Absolutely. Chaz, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's really important. Like, for me, like, um, I, I was recently going to um to see like a um psychiatrist, but like I went, I went to like two appointments though, and I'm just like, I still have to find like a, a therapist that's like right for me. But like, you know, someone because I I just recently started talking about oh, you know, because I did my show with you, I mean, did the show with you, and um. I was recently like talking about my um through palsy and how you know how growing up dealing with that and how like um mentally like that has impacted me too like with you know people like just me growing up and my experience of dealing with it and like how my family view me and just how people view me in general and and still like at work and how people treat me at work because of it and stuff like that so yeah it's really important um to get like it's not necessarily don't need it like for um you know it's a crazy like you just think like you can need it because um like they label you as crazy but you know it's just important I think everybody should get on um, therapy because it's like every, we all dealing with something there's something in life that we all go through that we just need to talk to with somebody that's not um a friend that's not family so so we all need that extra push. Jamal, what you think? Um, I'm I'm with Day and Shaz, man. I'm a I'm a huge, super huge advocate of it. Um, I myself have uh, have been in therapy. Um, for me, it was about j the process. Sometimes us as people, humans, we have a hard time with understanding our very own process mm -hmm. and and how to cope, how to communicate, how to you know. 
as they said, transition, how to, like, it's so much in life that moves around. And sometimes, you know, you may not have control of it. You may have control of it. Sometimes it, it, it's easy and slow. Sometimes it's ridiculously fast. So, you know, us as humans, we, you know, as, as intelligent of a beings as we are, we just may not know how to cope or deal with it. So to 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 go to somebody professional and to sit and to just say, yo, here I am. And I do not know. And then, you know, a lot, I, I feel like, you know, and, and, and I always talk to a lot of people, and especially people I feel like may need to talk to somebody. And it's just like, you know, well, why? Well, I should have somebody tell me. See, that's the first mistake. You think you're there to talk to somebody to tell you. No, they are helping you find a way to understand your process so you on your own can know how to adjust and adapt and to move positively forward. And that's always a, a misunderstanding. I feel like a lot of people, and I hate to say this like I'm coming at my people, but especially black people say feel it. like when they, oh, you say can go it. talk to somebody. What you trying to say I'm crazy? No, that's not what they're saying. But you see not to understand your process and how to move forward positively. So go to somebody that can, that can help you. If, if, if your heart not beating right, what you going to do? Going to go to a doctor. No, I'm going to take some right, robot tussle. Right, that's a double yeah. touchdown. That's okay. But you, you get what I'm saying, right? Like, you know what I mean? If your if, if your hip not you no know, moving right, what you gonna do? Go to the doctor. If you don't know how to dance or swing on a pole, what you gonna do? You gonna go see Dave. He gonna teach it. He gonna teach you how to break it down. You know? Period. <laughs> you know, so it's nothing wrong with going to see somebody and talking. I had a and I, I want to shout somebody out. My 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 boy Ross, you are. I, you know, young brother that's just insanely intelligent. And he was one of the people who who encouraged me to maybe go and talk to somebody about some things that I wanted to process within myself. And that was probably some of the best advice I've gotten from a friend. And once I like once I went through it, I just felt so I haven't done it in, in a really long time because I've been doing so well. But once I did do it, it's like mentally, spiritually, and just knowing who I was and just thinking about how I should approach things, it, 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 it's it been a world of a difference, you know? And sometimes it's easier for some than others, but I can say from experience, it is well worth it. Therapy is, is what got me here into doing this show years ago. I was teaching, I worked in, in, as a teacher, I was in school and something very traumatic happened to one of my students. And I, I blamed myself for what happened, even though I wasn't in the classroom when it happened, but I blamed myself for it. And then I also had a lot of trauma, you know, from the past and I started going to therapy and my therapist at the time, cause I've probably had like three or four therapists since, um, you know, cause it's all about trial and error. I mean, Sometimes therapists, they leave, they go to do different things. And this therapist um, in particular, that's what she had done. But she had said to me when I was seeing her in therapy, she said, what's something that you like to do that no one else knows that you like to do? And I said, well, I like to draw and I'm very good at drawing. So she said, OK, I want you to do I want you to draw a self-portrait. And so. That's what I did. Now, here's, here's the other thing. So she said, okay, you did that. What's something else that you like to do that nobody else knows that you like to do? Now, this is a story I'm only going to share with y'all. Well, I mean, everybody's going to find out, but I mean, I'm going to share <laughs> this with say, you. Uh... <laughs> I, I mean, you know, everybody's going to find out. But so, so I said, I like, I love music. I said, you know, I write songs. I know how to like play with beats. I sing, whatever. She was like, I want you to compose a song. And so I really didn't feel comfortable like singing it. So I made a beat and I actually made three. I have um, a MacBook, so I had like Logic Pro and, and, and uh, what's that other one? Logic Pro and, and um, GarageBand on my computer. So I made three beats. One of them came out sounding like 
I don't know, like Mary Jane by Rick James, like a cross between that and Make It Last Forever by Keep Sweat. Like it came out really, really strange. And yeah. then the other one, the other one is actually the theme music for this show. So when you listen, when you watch this show or you listen to the show and you hear them, them drums come on and you hear, it, or even when you listen to the end and you hear like all that, I did that. And I did that about eight years ago. So I never knew that I was going to use it for something. I just had it. And then when I decided to do the show, I said, I do kind of need theme music. So I just used that music for this theme music. And then the third, the third one. Now, this is this is this, this is the cool story. So I was always a fan of whenever you call like an office and you hear like the hold music um, is by Cisco. It's a company called Cisco and they make the phones and all that shit. So the hold music for Cisco. I used that beat and then I made like I put another beat and some other elements underneath of it. And it was a fucking hit. And I was like, man, this would be hot for Drake. Because at the time, Drake had like kind of like only been out for a few years. And it, it, and I wrote lyrics and everything to it. It was like your typical light skinned boy love song. And that's what I was going for. And that's what I was going for. And I was like, man, I got to get out of this. I got to pay these bills. I got to pay these student loans. I want to get out of Jersey City. Like I, there was just all these things that I, you know, I was like, man, I could do this if I, if I could shop this beat. So the thing with the sample is you have to clear it first. And it was unique because it, it wasn't music that had already been out. It was whole music. So I was calling Cisco. I'm calling like all these different companies trying to figure out how I can license this and actually use it in the beat. So I remember I got someone on the phone and it was a black woman. I knew she was a black woman. And she was just very, very helpful. And she said, I'm going to give you the information um, to, you know, the, 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 I think it was like a marketing department or something like that. And the marketing department, they weren't very helpful. Um, I had reached out to the original composers of the record and they said, you know, you're going to have to talk to Cisco about that. But it's, it's crazy how things work because like fast forward, like nine years, I hear that same sample in a Budweiser commercial on the Super Bowl. So I'm like, but I had that idea first. You know what I'm and one day maybe I'll play it. Like I'm very protective of my stuff. Like I mean, you see, it took me nine years to as to you should use the the theme music for the show. Hey. One day, you know, maybe I will. But but yeah, it, it, that was a anyway. I'm gonna move on because we'll be here all night. Um, Jamel, you you are you're a father. I know you're a dad to little Bam Bam, who's about to turn. Let me get it right. He's gonna be twelve at the end of the month. Correct. Right. We're not going to push. And, and you know what? It's crazy because I remember when he was a newborn baby and you were carrying, around, carrying him around Brooklyn. Man, that was one of the days, Like man. a little like bambino. I was so proud, man. Like, I had my first child. Well, only child. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's my <laughs> baby. It's a boy. You know, he's named after me. It's like, ah. So it's I like had you a made him all on, on your own. He looks everywhere. exactly like, like I didn't want to be one of those fathers that my son ever had to question, do daddy love me? Nah, you ain't gonna never have to question that, bye. Like, I've been around, like, right. here's the pictures. Look, this is what we was doing when he was he 12, has, man. Two, I'm three, telling you, four, like, like that, that, that kid is, like, joined at to you at the hip. I want to shift gears. I want to play this clip for you. Your son? That's not his name. Why would you call him Monkey? We just call him that. I don't think that's a nice name, though. Mm. 
Did he say it was okay to call a monkey? I don't know. I just got it from my friends. Would you want somebody to call you an animal name? Okay. Well, Jaden is his name, and he's not coming out to play with you guys today, and Cadence is. She's sweet. She handled that really well. All right. Okay. Talk to you later. How do you talk to your son about racism? I talk to him like a human. And I just adjust it for his age. Um, and, and it's funny you bring up that that TikTok because I literally had to have a discussion this year with him because there was a um a another uh, is an Asian student in his class. My son uh a few months ago, you know, wanted to be like his daddy, so he started wanting to grow the locks. So I, you know, yo, let's do it. He came in one day like, Daddy, yo, this boy in, in school keeps telling me I got fake locks and say I got worms in my head. So mm. he goes to a diverse school. So I asked him, I said, well, why would he say something like that without, you know, and I don't say it's another kid. So again, it, it, you know, kids don't always think for themselves. They go off their environment and what they may hear or see. So I just asked him a few questions. And one of the questions I did ask him was, was this another black kid? Or he said, no, daddy, is a, is a, he said Chinese. Chinese kid. That right there just I had to just sorry, you know what? I had to explain to him like that is an absolute disrespect to not only you, but me, our culture, our family, and don't you ever allow him to call you that again. And then after that, I jumped on my email and I contacted his dean and I explained it. They had a process about discrimination, which the school actually does take very seriously. Zero tolerance. Um I, and it was crazy. I actually had a discussion with him a few months ago. So he hasn't said anything to it. And I asked him, I said, has a kid ever tried to talk to you again? He said, he tried, but I did what you said, Daddy. I ignored him. I went the other way. I went to go you know, hang out with other other friends. I said, cool, cool. But to come to find out, he wasn't the only student that this kid was doing it to. Mm. It was a couple of other students well, that had not. dreads that he was. Mm -hmm. So what happened was is come to find out that the dean she did her job. She did an investigation. She talked to every student that my son mentioned and come to find out that he was. So the last thing I heard was that the dean had his parents come to the school. I don't know what happened after that, if he was suspended for a day or uh, they, they, they have another term for it, but it sounds like suspension. But where he had to stay home because, yeah. especially in Brooklyn, New York, if you're telling Anything that even sounds slightly, slightly discriminative to an African American, you about to open an ass whipping that you will not believe. Hey. And you know, again, it was you know, and no, listen, no, I don't discriminate against no culture, no people. But I, I told my son, I said, well, you have to think about it. What if you would have came out your mouth, and because he's of a, of an Asian descent and been like, well, where's my pork fried rice? Where's my egg rolls? Where's my... That's... That's what I would have done as a kid. But that was when I, mean, I was a kid. That, that, that's, that's how we would have been growing up because we, we we know about snacks. Yeah, we're, we're, different snacks we're, we're, we're different era. Yeah, right. we go back These and kids forth. Today, they're not cool for right that. now, it's, it, it's a zero tolerance. Right. They're not and my cool son knew better. He said, well, daddy, if I would have said that, I would have got in trouble and then I might have would have got suspended. Right. Which showed me that he Can was mature enough Jamel to know that. Kick. Is she is the dean, mm -hmm. is she black? Is she a black woman? The dean? No, the she school? is a I mean, I'm sorry, I'm about to say Asian. She is Latino. Oh, good for her. Good for her doing She's the right Latino, thing. She's Latino, so good for her doing the right thing. Yeah, I mean she I mean I, I was I, I appreciated that she she went full force with the with the investiga investigation. Right. I hope whatever meeting she had with this with this kid's parents, that he understood, like, listen, you can get yourself really hurt. Yeah. Say that to the wrong kid. Chill well, out. It's learned behavior, because he got that shit from somewhere. 
Yeah, it's and that's behavior. but that's that's the thing, man. Because I'm always scared to sit with a parent who's ignorant like that. Because then you're and and, and they and, 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 and Chaz probably understand this this switch, but it's just like this Brooklyn switch when we get upset and then flip someone. It's like what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I don't. Wow, I don't a whole lot of switches that. in me. I'm just saying. You yeah, I don't want to do that. I'm that same way. Switches the same. Well, Chaz is actually Chaz. You know, Chaz got all the switches because his crazy ass is from Harlem. Yeah. So, originally. <laughs> so he definitely understands. That's a whole like, different uh, switch. Like, I need to <laughs> just, just get me and my and my not only me, my child, my family, my culture, the respect you want for your right. own. And Absolutely. from what I've learned of a a lot of the, the Chinese, Japanese, Korean, um, Filipino, all of those cultures they consider Asian. They are very, very. That's a big honor. They like they treat their traditions and their culture like it's nothing better in the world. And I understand. So give my my culture and my people that same respect. Chaz, Chaz, tell me what you think about that. What do you think about um, you know, that clip, um, and that that. You know what that little boy was doing, and that and that and that mother, how she responded. I remember, I remember the first time seeing it. Like, I was just like, I kept saying to myself, I said, "Oh, she handled that. She handled that so well." Because I said, because I was like, if that was me, oh, I'm sorry, I would have forgot that was a little boy altogether. It's <laughs> always it's high yellow niggas that's like that. It's always us. It really because of the <laughs> always because of Fuck. Through through all of the lineage, we have some part of them inside of our culture because Absolutely. of uh, some of the things that happened through, through slavery and stuff. So Absolutely. I can't I, I I can't I can't discriminate again, and I I don't want to show that same discrimination. What I will like show show dislike for is this complete ignorance because it can come from every and anybody even our own people thank you oh, absolutely you know, you thank you yeah, yeah but i also for me personally yeah no what i always personally say as well too um just i say that it's not that i hate or dislike white people i hate and loathe the system that they benefit from right it's just that because of white supremacy and the, how the system was built for white people, by the white people in that regard, and we're in a country where we, our ancestors did not have to be here, right? That's the parts of it that I definitely despise. And when those white people who use that system to try to oppress us or to even try to talk against us, so to speak, even as light as microaggressions, they don't even have to be like blatant violence or like, you know, blatant, like, really killing us or whatever. But it's just when you have that type of level of privilege or of ignorance, like we have mentioned before, that's the part that I have absolutely no freaking respect for. And that's the part that I always tell black and brown people, especially, and other people of color who's, like, maybe outside of the white scope, but don't feel ashamed of pointing the finger and saying, hey, this is racist towards me, or I can identify when this is racially charged. Because at the end of the day, or whatever the case may be, all of that stuff where we have to kind of suppress our voices, that is very much respectability politics. And I kind of see almost Jim Crow where it's like, oh, we have to respect the white man's word or we have to kind of be passive so now we, we don't shake the table or whatever. But they need to be told about themselves. Now, what I will say, and I'm going to end off with this because it can go in many directions, right? Not all the time do we have to battle that shit. It's up to the white folks and their siblings to get that shit together too. We already know what we need in terms of equity and all the other stuff. White folks need to start talking to one another and battling one another to get shit right in that regard. And I'm gonna end it there. Because what I'm gonna say too, it's gonna take a white man to come along and completely denounce racism for anything in this country to ever change. And he can't just be no ordinary white man. Like he's gotta give you like Bill Clinton energy. Right. He's got to have a Southern accent. He's got to be of a certain age. And he's going to have to speak with such conviction mm. to completely denounce racism. And then it's also going to take a white woman to do that shit. 
because white women are the handmaidens of it. Like they they hold on and they uphold that white supremacy. I'm gonna tell you something. Oh, they do. <laughs> Every situation I've had in like a professional setting or or at like you know in a business, it has been some white woman doing some type of racist shit, and I'm not scared of any fucking one. I'm gonna call you out on it. I don't care. Like recently, Period. I was driving. This literally happened like three weeks ago. And I'm making my turn. It was like construction. And I'm making, you know, a left. And I'm I'm in Jersey doing this. And I know Jersey. Jersey, you know, is like up north Alabama in some places. It really is. But and I'm I was in a part that is kind of like, you know, mixed or whatever, multicultural, but at the same time, you have those redneck type people who, you know, come out and, and they they're racist. So I'm turning. And I just hear, you fucking nigger, you fucking idiot nigger, I'll kill you, you fucking nigger. And I'm like, I'm fucking triggered. So I go into the glove compartment and I get my gun. I'm licensed to carry. I get my gun because I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to have to shoot someone. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I'm fucking triggered. I don't know who he's talking to. I look out my rear view. He's not looking directly, you know, at me or at my car. I don't know who he's talking to. But whoever he was talking to, I was triggered. And I felt like at that moment, I had to defend myself. So mm-hmm. I had my gun and I, ha- I had my gun on my lap. So he's, again, he's, he's in a fucking semi truck. He's behind me and he's just like going. And so I'm making a right or whatever. I'm turning because it was like this, this stupid detour in the middle of the day. Like, why the fuck you do construction in the middle of the day? Like people are doing shit. Like do that shit in the middle. Of, well, no, don't do that shit in the middle of the night because then you'll end up like me the other week when I went to Deshaun's thing and, and I waited a half hour to get in the Lincoln Tunnel. But anyway, okay. I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? Like, what 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 warranted that type of reaction from him? So I turned, and then he kept going straight, and he's just like still yelling, and I said, this person is headed down the wrong fucking path, because there's going to be someone, like that racist kid who was like 30 years old, who just got killed in Cali by that 80-year-old black man. He's going to, somebody's going to fuck around and find out one day. Like I had another incident and this was a few years ago. I was in a Panera Bread and I'm waiting for my pizza. I'm minding my business, just minding my business. And this white woman comes up and she's like, can you, she's like, excuse me. Um, and, and so I just moved out of her way. Like, I don't like to really talk too much to strangers when I'm in places. So I'm just waiting for my stuff. So I'm, if you know how Panera Bread is set up, like they're all set up like this, like in the front you have like where people can make coffee and then you have like on the other side, you have like, you know, the cashier and everything like that. So I move further like away from her, like toward like where I guess you can go back to like sit or whatever. So she says, excuse me again, like, can you, you know, give me some space? And I'm like, okay, fine. But at this point, I'm like 50 feet away from her. Like I'm nowhere near this woman. And then she's she's still going. She's like, you need to give me some body space. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm not even near you. And she's like, you're close to me. You're too close to me. I'm like, I'm not even fucking near you. And then all the people start crowding. They, they start coming around and then phones start coming out and everything because I guess they think I'm going to hit this woman. And I'm smarter than the average bear. Like, I know better. No, I'm just going to embarrass her and make her look bad. I'm not going to beat her. I'm not going to throw coffee on this lady. Like, buddy, that's what she's want. Y'all want to see that shit and, and go viral and world star and TikTok and shit. Nah. So I have a very foul mouth. Y'all know that. Y'all watch the show. Y'all know me. And so I <laughs> the fuck out. I said, listen, you racist fucking bitch. I'm nowhere fucking near you, you goddamn Karen. Leave me the fuck alone. And she's like, I didn't mean it that way. And she just like scurried off. And then everybody is just standing around with their phones and shit. And so these, these, these black folks are there and they're like older. And I'm like, y'all saw that, didn't you? Nobody says a fucking word. Mm. There's one older black lady comes in and she's like, I just got here. And I'm like, no, you didn't. Cause you were sitting down over in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> your own people. Like they saw the whole fucking thing. This is in Habitown, Pennsylvania. I was coming from the eyeglass place. And I walked over from the eyeglass place. I went into Panera Bread. Mind you, 
this is like an area where like it's very you know like diverse like everybody knows Havertown everybody you know lives you know it's diverse like everybody lives there but I was just so taken aback at how conquered those black folks were that nobody nobody said anything and nobody like looked at that lady or said to that lady like yo you wrong like he wasn't even near you but I, I knew that at that moment, I had to give her something that she would not forget. Right. And I did it in front of people. I embarrassed her because that's what you got to do with narcissists. Because most racists are narcissists. That's what you got to do with them. You got to embarrass them. And I embarrassed her ass and she scurried, you know, she scurried away. And what really bothered me too, I think, was that the cashier, and she was brown. Like she, you know, brown people really have like this weird concept of racism because they've never really dealt with it in America the way we have, but they have dealt with it, but they just don't recognize it. She was like Indian or Hispanic or something like that. She just stood there. She just stood there cowering like, you know, so Panera Bread, fuck you. Period. Fuck you. Anyway. And fuck you for Ignorance is no different than cancer. Actually, it is a cancer. It is mm -hmm. a cancer, Jamel. It's a cancer, it bro. Is. And it's like, but it's, it's more powerful than what it can do to just a human body. What it can do to yeah. a world, yeah, and it, it seems to have a little a little grip on our world, man. And all of us, I don't care what what race, what sexuality, what hum, human type of human, I don't care who you are. We gotta we, we we gotta get rid of that disease, man. It's just it's killing all of us. I told y'all you, you what it's gonna take. I told y'all. But, but anyway, we got we got lighting things up. Let's do, light though, things but up. I Let's... just wanted to say one thing, like, too. Okay. That, like, you know we have a lot of work to do because look what happened with this, um, the movie, The Little Mermaid. All this hate that the actress received, like, it's absolutely disgusting. And just this morning, I seen, like, a picture, like, they did, a, like, a cartoon um, remake on Facebook. And they had like I guess like the actress touching the original Little Mermaid and the original Mermaid they had her with the face disgust and they trying to make um what's that I mean Haley Bailey look yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. and she's beautiful and they just trying to make her look like disgusting they had her eyes like on each side of, like it was just like I mean it's like something over a fictional movie and these people it's like. I don't know. I don't know how to. Explain, you know what? It's just you like, know what? It's just too? ridiculous. It's just like it, it is, and it, and you know what bothers me about that? It's a children's movie. I mean, we could yeah. all go see it, but this is for kids. And here yeah, exactly. you are. You got to be really fucking demented to pull apart some shit for a kid. It's for a kid. It's for kids. Like you really got to be fucked up. But here's the thing, because y'all know I be going deep with shit. And then I'm going to move on. So I think a lot of that racism, a lot of that beef is with Disney. Because y'all know Disney's in Florida. And right now in Florida, the, uh, uh, the, the governor down there, he wants oh, to yeah. ban just all kinds of things. He wants to ban black history. He wants to ban abortions. He wants to ban Disney from hiring people who are, you know, black or LGBT, all of that shit. He just doesn't want it. And I think that a lot of those people are now taking up their beef with Disney because Disney is not agreeing with Death Santis, the governor Death Santis. We're, gonna call, we're not going to say his real name. We're just going to call him what the fuck he is, Death Santis. So I think that a lot of that goes into that too. you know. And if Disney decided they wanted to pick everything up and go to a different state, I wouldn't be mad at them at all. Well, that's a problem with DeSantos, that we're like as a as a politician, so he's not thinking. You're trying to you're you're trying to force a state to go against a global company. And, Bro, and here's the thing, Jamel, it's not just Disney, it's lost. ABC. It's ABC, it's ESPN, it's Hulu. Like Disney owns so much. Yeah, he's he ain't gonna be successful with that shit. Social media be going in on people who like skin on their salmon. Like what? <laughs> Wait, what? Say that again? Chaz. Ah, this is perfect because I was going to go right to you. I was going to go right to you. Chaz, what do you think about eating salmon with the skin on it? With the skin on it? Mm -mm. 
<laughs> you don't, you don't fuck with that? No, I don't like. I don't even like this. You know, I always take this. Mm, no, no, no. I don't even know what else to say, but no to that. <laughs> like, yeah, I, it don't. It don't bother it's me. It's like, for me. I mean, if it comes off, it comes off. But if it's on yeah, there, yeah. I'm eating it. Dave, what about you? Do, do you I like mean, the I personally eat. Mm-hmm. anything that tastes good so if the skin tastes good i'm going to eat the skin but also it's just like i eat it in both ways because i also eat sushi so there's no skin i'm lying there's Ooh. instances where they might have like include the skin like that's the skin 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 and skin sushi well but not mistaken but that's that's of a, yeah that's like eel and, and different fish but yeah yeah yeah. salmon they do it with it too no, yeah the salmon in particular yeah absolutely yeah, I, would, I would eat all of it Skin, everything. Uh, when I cook on salmon, I cook it with the skin on. Um, it's, it's a function. Definitely a function. I mean, that's what all the omega threes are. All the omega acids, all the healthy shit is in the skin. Like I like the skin because I mean, you know, I, I'm a fat boy. I like everything, so I, I don't care. You know, Period. I, 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 Same. Exactly. Okay, exactly. But um, real quick PSA. I got to do this really quick. Fourth annual uh, Black Women in Comedy Laugh Fest begins June fourteenth. This coming Wednesday. So visit littlefieldnyc.com for tickets to opening night and visit bwiclaughfest.com for more information. That's B-W-I-C-L-A-F-F-F-E-S-T. Also next week, our very own Dave Phoenix is performing down in the DMV at PolCon 2023. His site, blackphoenixdance.com. Go there for tickets and more. He's going to have a sip and paint coming up too. Whatever's your twist. See what I did? What I, what I did? <laughs> Do the information before the price goes up. And I'm telling you, on this show, like, be for everybody. We got, we thoughts. Get us lit. We thoughts. We got joke sisters. And we got clapper niggas. We outside. We, we outside. We painted the town red. And, and speaking of the clappers, the sh- day, I got to give you props. Because <laughs> that show at House of Yes was, listen, everybody... Deshaun put on a show, put together a show for Nasty Wednesdays at the Onyx Room. It's on the side of House of Yes. It's on Wyckoff. Because you know out in uh, Bushwick, is is it like Jefferson and Wyckoff, something like that. Yeah. Tell everybody about that real quick. Because that, let me tell you, I I, I can't even begin to to, to begin. Black, brown, queer folks or whatever, very open, um, open to all in a sense. But you can sign up in advance. You come. It's like two at a time sets or whatever just dancing on dancers, doing the fucking thing. The event is free, which means there's no excuse to not come and tip, okay? Um, I'm very huge on tipping. I tell people <laughs> tip your fr- There's no freaking excuse, especially if you're coming um, with free admission. You ain't got to complain about door plus tipping the dancers. Use all of that money that you probably would have paid for a $30 mm-hmm. event. That's like literally what a dollar per dancer. Or something, time. Right? What happened with me was I overslept. So I didn't make it to the bank. <laughs> Oh, no, that's I have slept, and I'm gonna tell y'all something. This next time, I'm being there like that. So yeah, sure I got all my singles before I drop the single. But you what know, I will say you. though is, is that the yeah. people who came understood the assignment. Okay, like there was yes. literally tips on tips. Oh my god, it, it was crazy. It was. It was cra- I mean, there was money. It was so there was so much money out there. There was there, there, there were money. There was money underneath the platform. Yes, all of my like, dancers was able to was. rake it up. All of my yeah. dancers was able to rake I'm it up, and that's what I want. <laughs> if you ever wanted to 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 like tap into your inner stripper, okay, go to this event because I got to tell you, there, there was a young lady there, and uh, you, you, they, you know who I'm talking about, right? But, but Chaz and Jamel don't. So, so let me tell y'all, there's this young lady. Yeah, there. That, make sure you make sure you say it loud. I do not. I asked do not know what he's talking about. <laughs> but you're going to know real I soon, know though. But you're going to know. Have no about. idea. I've no, no oh, idea. I've been with you, baby. It's only you. You ain't know you the one. Not Listen, there. she going she gonna to be there, too. She going to be there. But now, her, I want to make sure she know I ain't been there. And if anybody asking, you damn right, I'm scared of my life. Half the wife, half the life. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. I'm letting them They'll know be there together right? the next time. June 28th, they'll be there, they'll be there exactly. together. <laughs> so listen, so listen, there was, there, was, there was this young lady there. And she came out. She was very demure, very short, very slight. She had glasses on. She had like, you know, dreadlocks or whatever. Very sweet looking girl. You know who I'm talking about. They don't say her name. No, I'm talking about. Right. 
she put these she put these heels on and they were like these these they were like as high as this this cup i have right here they were they were they were high as hell and i'm thinking okay she's just going to get up here she's just going to spin around a little bit like that's going to be cute she clicked those heels and they lit up then she starts climbing up the pole and she's spinning all around and her hair spinning. It was, she was just amazing, that young lady. And another young lady went up there and I think she squirted on me, but we're not going to get into that right now. It's very early. <laughs> it's very early. Anyway, listen, listen. Deshaun's events are for everybody, okay? Gay, straight, queer, bi. I saw women. I saw trans women. I saw men. I saw trans men. I saw couples. We're not going to talk about that couple that was there because we, we had our own little inside joke about, about homeboy that was part of the couple. But anyway. Oh, baby. Yeah, I'm not going to say that. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not going to talk about radio. But anyway, couples, singles. It's I a mean, human event. Singles. It's rare to come up into a place and just get good vibe from everybody. Like it was body inclusive. I mean, all kinds of body types. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, 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 and for me, and what I saw was that it was an amazing self-esteem booster. Like when you show body diversity and you yourself have the self-esteem to go out there and perform. Like, I mean, it's just, I don't know. It's incredible what you're doing. I had to put you on blast about that. But, but speaking of though, speaking of, speaking of, I met Chandra Smith. Chandra was in an interview that I did a few months back, she was Ms. Wheelchair uh, 2023, and she was so fascinated by this one, and she said she's going to get her prosthetics, and she said she's going to build up her core, and she's going to do a wheels and pulls event with with you. Like, she's I'm, reach out. Inside. She will. No, 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 she definitely will. She's beautiful inside and out, and you guys, if you haven't seen our interview, um, go check it out. Definitely donate to her GoFundMe um, so she can be Ms. Wheelchair America 2024. And that's up on uh, chrisdavidshow.com. Yeah, I have a question real quick. Yo, Jay, you be having little people in? Everybody, you be having listen, little, you everybody, be having little, everybody little people? Jamel, everybody can come. I've always wanted, I, that, that's one kind of stripper I've always wanted to see. I want to see a little person. Oh, I am done. I am dead. Wow. I probably just heard what you said. Um, To be honest with you, <laughs> I, like I said, it's... It, uh, to be honest with you means... No, we have not everybody. Had them. No, not yet. However, yes, they are definitely welcome. Anyone, for my event, literally, like, if anyone who is willing to just let their free flag fly or whatever for that night, you, you might not be a professional stripper, but if you want to be a stripper for that night, Come on down to the red room. Come on down to the black Phoenix then. That's 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 pretty much where I'm. Yes. So yes, if a little person absolutely need to shake it like a salt shaker and they need some money or even like trying to work for they for they you know for they for an aspiration, it's all kind of makes sense. Yeah, you can be the most beautiful person mm -hmm. facade, right? When we see or whatever the case. If your core and your being and your personality and your spirit is freaking horrible and rotten and ugly, that can make you the most ugliest person to me, okay? And I think that if we really do focus more so on the least, and it's easier said than done to being better people for at least others, um, then that can make us better people overall for ourselves. Um, and for me as well, too, you have to be your own chili. So when it does come to self-esteem, there is a lot where I have to really build myself up and like, li listen, just because I'm feminine or just because um. I like, you know, I might show my body or whatever the case within the profession I have. It doesn't make me less of a person. It doesn't make me less of an um, intellectual being. It doesn't make me less than at all, right? My my skin color, me being HIV positive, me, um, like those things do not make me less of a person. I'm still here. I'm still thriving. I'm in, a, you know, in abundance and comfort at the moment or whatever the case, right? Like, it's very much when it comes to self-esteem. I think what it is that we, when you allow other people outwardly to tell you who you are, who you are supposed to be, and it's supposed to fit a certain standard, that can really dim down people's self-esteem in their life. And it can, depending on the person, it can take a little bit to really drag them out of that, out of that muck of what society has to say about you. Chaz, what do you think? Oh, that's a hard one for me. Cause Come know, on, Chaz, go in. Go in. But, like, uh, uh, I don't know. You know, me personally, like, I always struggled with um with my own insecurities and stuff. So it's like, 
you know, um, they touch on it a little bit when you talk about like kind of colorism, like, you know, even when I express to like either family members or friends who was like of um, you know, the a uh, dark dark skin or dark tone than me and um and I tell them about like my insecurities and stuff and they just like try to brush it off. Oh, you don't got no worries, you're like light skin. Da, 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 da. Like that's like the comment I hear all the time, but it's just like, you know, off from days I don't like people say that I um that they like, oh, you're really cute, you're really handsome. But like, it took a while for me to see. Like, most days, I don't even see that for myself. I don't know if it's mostly because of how I viewed myself with my cerebral palsy, and um, you know, and that had a lot to do with it. Where I didn't feel like attractive because I feel like people just see me for that and not what I bring, um, like my personality or anything else. I just feel like they just see me as like a disabled person. They may never see me for anything else. But, yeah. Jamel, what do you think? <laughs> well, for, <clears throat> Thank for me, you for going in, Shaz. I appreciate it. <laughs> no, that was me going. I was like, that was lighter. But... Okay. Uh, Thank you. For me, go, ahead. go ahead, Jamel. For me, I feel like everything is, is perspective. And I feel like God himself even has perspective. So God, you know, in my, in my, from my perspective, in my eyes, God is an artist, and the world itself was an abstract painting. So if you ever been to a museum and when you're looking at abstract paintings, everybody has a different pers uh, preference and perspective of what that abstract looks like. It could be like mad different colors, but it's one part one person's looking at because that's they pulled to that. Another part, another person's looking at. They pull to that, and then maybe there's a few people that's pulled to everything, but it's like the world, the human society, we're abstract. We're not supposed to all be the same, look the same, act the same. No, we're supposed to be different, and we're supposed to be able to look at each other and say, well, that's unique, or that's just not my thing. But, you know, to somebody else, it's going to be beautiful and be accepting of that. So for me, you know, um, and it's a lot of like, I had a uh, uh, insecurity about I'm I'm a short guy, I'm five foot three, you know what I mean. So growing up, it's like I always got the jokes, oh you short, blah blah. blah. All right, cool. Until I found that one tall girl who loved nothing more but a short guy. Man, I thought I was God for a second. That was a like, good Lord of mercy. But then I started meeting more and more and more and more, and it's like okay. I came to just say it's preference. The world is abstract, man. Find the part that you, if you can't like all of it, find the part you love, but just still respect the rest of the painting. Don't just say because you like one part of it, mm -hmm. fuck the other part. Nah, abstract. I love that part. I'm not really connected with that part, but I'm going to just focus on this beautiful part that I just can't take my eyes off and leave it at that. June marks the 33rd annual Black Music Month. And that's crazy because all four of us are older than Black Music Month. And I remember this <laughs> ad from when I was a kid. There was this ad from Burger King, like all the, the, the magazines had it. It was, it was in essence, the Ebony and Jet. And it was like just showing the history of Black music. And they had like these little, I guess to, to, to represent hip hop, they had like these little nuggets with like glasses on and box haircuts. But anyway. <laughs> Um, in, in 1990, um, Deanna Williams and Sheila Eldridge launched the Association of African American Music Foundation to promote and preserve Black music. Deanna also helped write House Concurrent Bill 509, which recognized our accomplishments in music and helped establish Black Music Month. Yesterday, Deanna, as well as Kenny Gamble, was honored by Philadelphia City Hall with a proclamation commemorating June as Black Music Month. And I mean, what hasn't Miss Deanna done? Like, I love her. She's like my auntie in my head. Hi, Miss D. Anyway, um, guys, let's talk about music. Who are some of your favorite artists and genres? And oh, Chaz, well, I want you know, to take we, this. We're we going to be sitting I, here talking all damn day with me. I know, but that's, my, that's why I'm going that's to Chaz my first, because I know you. You're the music guy. That's, so that's my home. But for me, um... No, I said Chaz. Chaz. Oh, Chaz? You. I'm, 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 I'm going to go first. I'm, I'm, I'm the day. Yeah, the other Taurus. <laughs> go ahead. Um, what is that, my favorite artist? Um, 
I go to who I listen to, right? Um, I listen to a lot of um, Jasmine Sullivan. Um, who else? Um, who else? Mary J. John B. I'm like an R&B. <laughs> R&B kid. Um, like old school, uh, back in the day artist. Um, who else? I'm trying to think. Yeah, I used to listen to um En Vogue. They say I used to jam uh when I got to En Vogue when I was young, they say my parents used to say um they used to play it in the car, they said my foot used to be going. <laughs> Escape. <laughs> oh who else? I'm trying to think. But yeah, I still listen to all nineties nineties R and B. That's where I'm at. Like my head is still fat. That's what's up. Um, Deshaun, what about what about you, Dave? Yes, so for me, my I'm all over the place. I'm not gonna lie. I very much go from very very old school to feeding me. So that even goes to like once again, I'll mention Tina Turner. Love Tina Turner. Um, even when it came to like, like Temptation, certain like certain like Motown or whatever the case may be. Um, Michael Jackson, of course, family is a huge Jackson family. I'm talking about my family. We love the Jackson in my household. So like Michael Janet. Um shit. Who else can I even think of? Like it'll even go down like there's a couple of songs that I would even go to almost like freaking Barry White, freaking Marvin Gaye, right? So then we have even more contemporary or like around our era. So of course Beyonce, Destiny Child. Um, who else? So many people. I still even listen to Sierra every so often. Because Sierra actually started my dance career. Fun fact. Um, Sierra was the reason why I started dancing in particular. Um, and it even down to like, well, I listen to a lot of female rap. Um, so I listen to definitely Megan Thee Stallion's on top of there. I got to give props of course to Nikki in terms of music. I'm going to keep it that way. Um, I mean, I, I was a huge Nikki fan, so don't get it fucked up. I will be the first person to step up and word by word rap Itty Bitty Piggy in the freaking club. All right, Jamel. Go ahead, because I know this is the area. I mean, for me, it depends on the mood I'm in. I mean, when I'm in my hip hop, I'm a, I'm all about the greats, man. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm about again. It depends on the, the era, but I, I mean, of course, I'm a Brooklyn dude, so Biggie and Jay is up there. But Tupac, N.W.A., um, Lauryn Hill, um, Rhapsody. Uh, I mean, I go on and on and on with with the hip hop, but it's a lot. The then if you want to jump into the R&B. Oh man, Babyface, uh, Boys and Men, which is probably my favorite group of all time. I love Boys and Men. I'm actually now listening to um YA Sons, Wamor. They just came out with a new video that's really dope. I'm looking forward to them. Um, what else? Johnny Gill, um, her, um, Maxwell. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I go on and on and on. Um, but I go into some stuff that I, probably a lot of people don't listen to. I'm a big house music fan. Like I love, love Tim this City. This is why me and him are are are, are tight because we're huh? both househeads. Oh yeah, That's oh so yeah, definitely. We're, tight. Like, we're both householders. Yeah. The Tin City, CC Rogers, Robin S. Um, who else? Uh, uh, Frankie Knuckles. Like I grew up on that. You know what I mean? Shout out to my uncle DJ Cool Red Alert. Uh, and my uncle Dino. Shout out to Chuck Chillout, who you're supposed to be getting me an interview with. Chuck, but Chuck you know, Chill I'm gonna out, let you not, Chuck, out. Chuck, Chuck Chillout didn't do the house music. He was harder with the, no, with, he's the uh, with the hip hop, but Red Alert and my, and my uncle Dino Pereira, they they and really shout out to them me too. to that house music. Um, DJ uh, Ralph McDaniel's, even though everybody remember him, him from Video Music Box, but he actually does DJ. And then if we go to the rock, man, I mean, I'm not sure if I want to even call them rock, but they were more to me like a really um. A, they, they was like the first fusion group, and, and which is Queen, because Queen did it all. Queen did rock, alternative, hip hop, um, <laughs> um, blues, R and B. If you listen to that Queen music, man, they infused a lot of stuff together. Orchestra. So, um, when it comes to jazz, I'm down with, of course, man, the greats, man, Dizzy Gillespie, um, Felonious Monk. Um, I can go again. I can go on and on. Miles Davis. I go on and on and on. I like where you took it, though. Can I tell you something? Because this, this, you took it. See, this is why I like this because we're all in sync. 
I was because my thing is the eighties. I love like eighties and nineties also, but back then as an artist, you had to have it all. Like when you think about it, think about Michael Jackson. Michael was constantly releasing music, so much so that the other artists that we know of from those eras did the same thing. And then you have Prince. Prince came with all the creativity. So with the two of them together, you had releases and you had creativity. You had both just going constantly. There, there's this, the artists that, you know, resonate with me. Like I like Jasmine Guy. Y'all may not know Jasmine Guy as a musician, but Jasmine Guy from a different world actually had music out and she had a record. She has a record. She has two that I like. She has one called Try Me. And if you go to uh, YouTube and you look up Jasmine Guy Try Me on Soul Train, she fucking killed that shit. Like when I'm talking about singing, dancing, choreography, like on beat, she hit every fucking mark. She was a triple threat. Same with, she has another record called I know, Another Like My Lover. And there's a remix to that that I really like. And shout out to Chuck Chill Out because he plays it all the time. And Chuck, um, do my show. Jamel, work that out. There's another, there's another musician I like, Will Downing. And the thing is, y'all may know Will Downing is just a jazz musician, but Will was doing like everything. He was doing R&B. He was doing garage, which is another genre of like a fusion of like R&B and house. Mm -hmm. And he was kind of like the Brian McKnight before Brian McKnight was Brian McKnight. Like Will Downing was sure. who you called to get that smooth record. Like that's like my just... He reminds me of a, of a Bayesian uncle. That's my Bayesian uncle in my head. He has a record called In My Dreams. And if you go to YouTube, you'll see that also. And that is not only a jazz record, but there's also a house, a garage house version of that. And then if you type in Donna Allen, Showtime at the Apollo, she does this record called Serious. And I don't know what Donna was on, but Donna <laughs> was hit on the fucking Apollo. She needs this, she's doing all of these moves and then she needs this man in the stomach. Like, I mean, she just, Donna was, was fucking lit. And I love the 80s music because it's all about having a good time. It's all about being, you know, just fun. And I mean, there's some scandal in those 80s records. There's some unrequited love. There is. But I don't know. I'm all about just having a good time with the music. Like, if you go back and you watch my interview with uh, Joanna Briley, I know that shit is like three hours long, but I don't care. Watch it. I bring out my records because I have a record collection and I, I talk about uh, Lolita Holloway and I have you know, a record of 12 inch for, for, of a Lolita Holloway's Crash Goes Love. And that's one of my favorite records. And that's like, sounds like Planet Rock or something like that, but that's a dope record. But anyway, I don't know if you all know, I have a time machine. I'm an Afrofuturistic magical Negro. All right. And I ask all my guests this. Chaz and Deshaun have been here before, so watch their shows to find out what they said. But Jamel, I want to know from you, if you had a time machine, what you would go back and tell yourself in the past? Good question, man. Um, if I had a time machine, I would tell myself uh, tomorrow's lottery numbers. Good one. That's a good one. <laughs> because with with everything I've learned thus far in my life, I really wouldn't want to change that. But tomorrow they hit that lottery. <laughs> so that's probably what I would tell myself, man. Like, um, because as much as we all say that we would like to change something, if you're happy with who with who, with whom you are today. Your mistakes was a, 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 a process to what you are today. Your pain was a process. Not just the good, but all of it, it was a process. So, yeah, I wouldn't want to tell, I wouldn't want to say much about yesterday, but I would definitely want to help out with tomorrow. So I would tell myself tomorrow's lottery numbers. Listen. All, all of them. I'm talking about take five. Listen. Talk about. Um, Powerball, Powerball, Mega Millions, Million, Cash for Millions. Life. I'm telling myself everything. That's a, you know what? See, this is why I fucks with you. I knew you was gonna give me something good like that. Like, let me tell y'all real quick. The first time I met Jamel, 
And this is what I, I bring this up to you like at least once a year. But the yeah, first time it. I met Jamel. So once upon a time, there was there was a kid who was wanting to be a member of the illustrious fraternity, Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Fraternity Incorporated um, established in 1911. And so I wanted to be a part of the Brooklyn Long Island chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. And so I, I go in this room. I want to be a part of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. I'm just waiting for some things to get taken care of. I know. I, you I, listen, I you, you're going you're gonna to get it all straight. You're going to figure it out. But you, you, you're my brother regardless. So listen, I walk into this room. And there are about 15 guys just sitting around, scared. It's early in the morning. They sitting nervous and shit. Mm -hmm. And so I heard him before I saw him. Jamel walks in and he's like, hey, what's going on, everybody? He starts cracking jokes because he's naturally funny. <laughs> but keep in mind, I said, I heard him before I saw him. So this big motherfucker, I can't even remember his name. He was like 6'5". He's blocking Jamel. Because again, Jamel told y'all he's 5'3". And so he comes from behind him. I'm thinking it's the big dude talking like this. He comes from behind him. And right then and there, I'm like, me and him have been homies since then. That was 20, that was 2011. Yeah. All right. Yeah, sure enough. Sometimes in order to keep your sanity, you must act insane. So I appreciated that. That you came up in that room. And you, you were the icebreaker. You made everybody feel comfortable. And thank you for doing that today. Let's give it up for Brooklyn's playboy, Jamel Lamar. Let's give it up for him. Man, it's all give love, it man. You show love, you receive love. Absolutely. So. Let's give it up for Deshaun, Dave Phoenix, the Clapper's arm brister. And let's give it up for our CP warrior in Harlem's very own Chaz Bedford. I am your host, Chris David TV. Follow me and my guys. All of our socials are here in the video. If you hit us up, be as respectful as you would to the officer writing you that ticket on Route 13. If y'all have ever driven down south, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about when I'm talking about Route 13. I'm in today's show a um, little differently than I typically do. The Stonewall Uprising was a series of events between police and LGBTQ protesters which stretched over six days beginning June 28, 1969. The media often refers to the Stonewall Uprising as the Stonewall Riots. The reference to these events as riots initially was used by police to justify their use of force. Throughout New York State, homosexuality was considered a criminal offense, and it would take over a decade of organizing before same-sex relationships were legalized in 1980. This month marks the 53rd anniversary of Pride Month, which in 1999 was declared by our 42nd president, Bill Clinton, as Gay and Lesbian Pride Month. In 2011, our 44th president, Barack Obama, expanded the officially recognized Pride Month to include the entire LGBTQ plus community. What the media often leaves out is that Black people were at the forefront and at the helm of the uprising and refused to toe the line. Their courage and willingness to stand up for what's right has afforded us the freedoms and rights that we all have today as individuals, no matter how we identify. I did this panel because I wanted to show that even though we come from different upbringings, different neighborhoods, and different sexual orientations, that we could still share space as Black men and revel in our commonalities. No heterosexual Black men don't only associate with queer or homosexual Black men, only if they're related. We fellowship with one another, and most of all, we hold each other accountable and we support one another. The Chris David Show is, and will always be, a safe space. And our goal is to support, uplift, and inform, as well as entertain. I'm glad that we could all get together and do this. God willing, we'll do this again soon. And in honor of Jerry Springer, that was my final thought. Now get the fuck out of here, you crazy kids. Be well. Thanks, guys. Peace.